One of the most common issues everyone is having is bed leveling. So today let's look at BL Touch, which is an automated bed leveling sensor. So this particular BL Touch is from Big Tree Tech, and this particular set comes with everything that you need for Ender Tree version 1. So let's take a look at it. A little disclaimer, the BL Touch is not your problem solver if your bed is not level in the first place or your Ender Tree has been built wrongly. Please take note that BL Touch is not a device for you to fix bed leveling issues but a device to help you improve bed leveling and also improve those uneven bed. Alright, with that aside, Let's look at unboxing of the BL Touch and the installation guide. In the Big Tree Tag BL Touch box, you get the entire kit like this. One is the original BL Touch together with some cables, some connectors, and also springs. And now you have the rack, which is the metal rack here. Previously, people used to 3D print a holder, but this particular one is steadier and also more accurate. You have your BL Touch guidebook, which is quite important if you are doing this for the first time. And along with it, you have your burner, the ISP pin board, right? Over here is the USB one, and the whole connector cables, which is long enough to connect all the way to the BL Touch. Let's take a look at the guidebook. So, of course, you can just follow the instructions in the guidebook, but some of the things are a little bit small and also misleading because this particular one is created for the Creality V1 mainboard. However, in this video, I'll go through with you on how to install this to the V1.1.4 motherboard and also the V4.2.2. First of all, let's go download the files that we require. This particular guide is for Creality version 1 motherboard, which is the older one. If you're using the version 4.2.2, the guide is so much easier. So anyway, just go to the Creality website and look for the latest firmware for the BL Touch. The firmware that you downloaded, especially for the version 1.1.4, will also come with your ISP programmer, which is called procisp.exe. So this is only for Windows, so please prepare a Windows machine. Next is to get access to the motherboard. Well, the best way is to remove the two screws on top. Of course, here I have my fan cover, which I 3D printed. And then the two big screws in front and one long screw at the bottom. Now, let's get to the two big screws in front and remove it. So once this is done, the whole casing that protects the motherboard can be opened and we can see the motherboard. Be very careful when you place it down because we don't want to accidentally snap any of the cables. You can see here, this is the version 1.1.4 mainboard. So for the version 1.1.4, there's a few things you need to do first. Firstly, remove the ribbon that is actually connecting the mainboard to the LCD screen. After removing the ribbon, you can now see the programming pin and from there, we can just connect the ISP pin board to the programming pin. Pay attention to the direction of the pin. For the ribbon, you won't get it wrong. But for the pin, this is a simple guide. Make sure that the ribbon is flowing away from the main board. Now, the other end of the ribbon, just connecting it to the burner, which is the USB burner. And you can only install it one side. So once it's done, the USB port goes into your computer. Once you plugged in, you can see that the USB burner lights up and the main board lights up as well. Next, go to your downloaded files and look for a file name called procisp, which is P-R-O-G-I-S-P.exe. Launch that and you'll get this programming interface. First of all, select the chip at Mega 1284P. There's a few in the selection here. Don't select the wrong one. 
Next, leave everything default and click on this option button. And now enter these values. For the low value is D6, the high value is DC, and X value FD. Once you're done, click right and it will prompt you to select the ROM files that you downloaded. And once you're done, click auto and the programming will start. You will see the progress bar at the bottom and it should be done within a minute or two. Once done, go ahead and remove the ISB pin board and now go ahead and remove the Z axis and stop switch as well. Okay, if there's a little label that says Z stop. Next, we'll be installing the pin board A. So this particular part will go to the original slot for your ribbon. And the three little pin here is for you to connect the BL touch pins. So here we have to be careful because there are directions. VCC will be the yellow one. Ground, which is GND, is the orange one. And the green one is signal. Next, the ribbon from the LCD goes on to the pin board. There's only one direction you can do that. And the whole pin board goes on to the motherboard. And for this red connector, it is actually to replace your old uh, Z axis end stop. So just slot it in. Also, there's only one possible direction as the shape is unique. All right, and then put back the pin board and actually the hardest parts are all done. Go ahead and tidy up the cables using the supplied cable ties. Make sure that the wires are not too tight and it can go out from behind the casing. Now, I'd like to point to you one tiny flaw. So for those who are using this BL Touch systems for the V1.1.4 motherboard, you'll realize that the pin board and the ribbon is actually hitting the fan. So there are two options you can do here. One is to totally remove the fan and to install the fan outside the casing, blowing in cold air into the casing. The other method will be a little bit more straightforward. It's just to remove one of the screws and lower the fan a little bit. By doing this little hack, the fan is still working efficiently and sucking in cold air into the casing. So just make sure that the only screw there is tight and is holding the fan in place. Once you're done, just close the casing once more. As you can see here, I did a quick test to make sure that the fan blades are not touching the casing and it's still working as normal. Alright. Now let's take a quick look at those who are using uh, version 4.2.2 mainboards. So for the 4.2.2 mainboards, you actually have these additional ports and your BL Touch directly goes there without needing any pin board. And you also do not need to do the ISP programming part and it saves us a lot of time. However, you'll need to do a little bit of modification to this particular pin. So as you can see here, the original ports here for the version 1 is VCC, ground and signal. Right? So it's yellow, orange and green. But for the version 4.2.2, you actually have to swap the yellow and the orange port. As you can see over here, the ports are ground, VCC, and then signal. Let me show you a simple trick to get these pins out and then swapping it. What you need is just the cable tie that comes with the BL Touch box. Just slide the cable tie underneath this black lever and you can just gently pull the entire pin out. Repeat it the same for both the yellow and the orange pins. Once you get it out, just swap them over and then you're done. So now the cable orientation is correct. Just go ahead and slide this connector into the three pins. With that done, 
Next, what you just need to do is just to swap the old Z-axis connector with the new red ones. So just pull this out and put the new one in and you are ready to go. From this point onwards, it will be the same for both the motherboard of version 1 or version 4. Um, so since we have already replaced the connector of the Z-axis end stop, we can go ahead to remove the original end stop switch from the printer. Next, let's work on the hot end. So first, we just need to remove these two screws and to install this particular bracket or they call it the rack that holds the BL touch. So just these two particular screws here and then the BL touch will go in there. So at the same time, since I'm removing this, I also make sure that I clean up the fans and also the hot end. Now the bracket goes on top here and the fan housing is screwed back on top of the bracket. And once we have that, just tighten up the screw and we are done for this particular part. I like how flush the rack is against the rollers and uh, it makes sure that it is straight and precise. So once this is done, pull up the connectors from below, the one that we cable tie it to the motherboard and there's only one way to install it into our BL touch. So just gently slide it in and we can now put the whole BL touch onto the bracket. Just to make sure that the installation is correct, we can see that the BL touch is slightly higher than the nozzle. Next is just to cable tie all the cables and making them neat so that it is not in the way. Right, now let's turn it on and let's take a look. Alright, so upon powering up, you will see that the BL touch is doing some self-test. Don't worry about it, it is just doing its job. You will see that it turns from red to blue and the probe goes down and up. That's okay. And now you will also realize that the firmware here, it says Ender 3 Pro. Yep, it is normal because of the new firmware. The final part of the setting is to make sure that we have the platform adjustment set correctly. So here, we just go to bit leveling and let the probe do its job. The BL Touch will probe 9 surface of the bait and from there, it will then stop. What you're going to do next is to go to Auto Home. So once you select Auto Home, the probe will go right to the middle and then it will hover a little bit above the bait. So what's happening here is it's going back to its default offset. So this next step is very crucial because we need to set the offset to be as close to the bait as possible. So firstly, we just go to prepare, move axis and move Z. And what we're gonna do here is we are going to move it one by one, starting with 10 mm, one mm, to get it as close as you can to the bait. And while doing that, you just put a piece of paper, just like how you do any bait leveling. So once you have that value, remember that value, and go to motion, Z, offset, and then what you do is you dial in exactly the same value that you see over there. Now once you're done, you just go back up and click on store settings. Alright, we have reached the end of the video. I hope you find this BL Touch installation guide um, useful. And remember, the BL Touch is not a replacement to fix all your bait leveling issue. You still need to make sure that the bait is level in the first place and your installation of your Ender 3, making sure that it is all straight and square and nice before you go ahead to put BL Touch. Check out my other videos, please like, subscribe and also follow us and give us your comment uh, so that we can improve further. Thank you and see you next time.